In this video, we're going to go over all the things you need to know about using Gradescope as a student. So first, let's talk about logging into Gradescope. In most cases, by the time you find out about Gradescope, your instructor will have already created a Gradescope account for you. In that case, all you need to do is just go to gradescope.com, click log in, and put in your email and the password that you set according to the link that you received from your instructor. If you didn't get that link or if you forgot your password, in either of those cases, you can just click forgot your password here. And you'll be able to put in your school email here and you'll get an email with a new link to set a password or to reset your password. Depending on your school, you may also be able to log in with school credentials. To see if this option is available for your school, you can just click school credentials here. And if we support logging in with school credentials for your school, you'll find it on this list. If your school is here, you'll be able to log into Gradescope with your school username or student ID. Occasionally, your instructor may also ask you to create your own Gradescope account and self-enroll in a course. This is possible if your instructor provides a course entry code. If you do have an entry code, then from gradescope.com, you can click sign up, select that you are a student, put in that entry code that was provided by your instructor, your name, your email, and your ID, and that will create a Gradescope account for you and self-enroll you in that course. If you're not sure whether you have an entry code, whether you already have a Gradescope account, or what email your account is under, please feel free to email help at gradescope.com and we'll help you out. In some cases, you might also end up with multiple Gradescope accounts where your courses and assignments are spread across different accounts. If that happens, please also email help at gradescope.com and we can help you with merging those accounts. Next, let's talk about submitting homework to Gradescope. When you log into Gradescope, you may see that there are a few homework assignments for you to be able to submit. For any homework assignment, you'll see what are you've submitted already. You'll see the release date, that's the date after which you can submit the assignment. You'll see the due date. For some but not all assignments, you'll also see a late due date, and you'll also see how long you have left to submit. Note that if there is a late due date, you will be able to submit after the due date but before the late due date, but those submissions may be subject to a late penalty as determined by your instructor and your course's policy. For most homework assignments on Gradescope, you're going to have two options for submitting. When I click on the homework assignment here, I'll see that I can either submit image files or submit a PDF. Let's talk about the image option first. This can be helpful if your homework's handwritten and you just want to take out your phone, take a photo or multiple photos of each question, and then upload those images straight to Gradescope. The Gradescope.com website is accessible for mobile devices, so you can also upload those images directly from your phone. If you want to go with the image option, you would select Submit Images, and you'll be prompted to select an image or multiple images from your phone or from your computer for each question. Note that in some cases, the image submission option may not be available, and in that case, you would need to submit a PDF file to Gradescope. Even if the image submission option is available, in many cases, we actually recommend that students submit PDFs even for handwritten work, just because the submission process is a little easier and it makes the assignment a little easier to manage on the instructor's side. If you do have a handwritten homework assignment and you'd like to convert it to a PDF, you can do that using a variety of free smartphone apps where you can just take photos of every page of your submission and the app will convert those photos to a PDF file. If you'd like to see some recommendations on apps that you can use or detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that, from your Gradescope account, if you click on account down here and click help and go to our student help center, you can read the instructions for scanning your homework on a mobile device and converting photos to a PDF by clicking on this section of the help center. From here, you'll see our recommended app for iOS phones or iPhones and also for Android phones as well. If you do go with the PDF option, once you have a PDF, you can just click Submit PDF, select that PDF file from your computer, and click Upload PDF. For most PDF homework submissions, there's going to be one additional step before you've successfully submitted your homework. 
That's the step where you're going to tell the instructor or the grader on which page or pages you answered each question. So you're going to see the list of the questions that the instructor has defined for the assignment on the left. You'll see that PDF file on all of the pages that you uploaded on the right. And all you need to do is select on which page you answered each question. So it looks like I answered question one on page one, question two on page one, question three on page one, and it looks like I answered 4.1 on page two and 4.2 on page two. So you just go through and you label on which page of your file you answered each question, and that's gonna make it easier for the instructor to grade the assignment. Once you're done, you can just click Submit. And this is very important. You should always wait until you see this message that your homework was submitted successfully before navigating away from Gradescope. This is your confirmation that your file has successfully reached the instructor and will be available for the instructor to grade. Once you've submitted, you will be able to resubmit as many times as you'd like before the deadline. You can view any past submissions in your submission history. You can download your submission, and you can also reselect those pages at any point until this assignment starts being graded by the grader. At that point, you will no longer be able to reselect the pages. For some assignments, you may also see this group members button. That means that there was an option for you to work on this assignment with a partner or with a group of students. If you did work on the assignment with one or more people, you can just select group members and select the name of your partner. You can also type in the first few characters of their name. And by adding a group member to your submission, the instructor will be able to grade the submission for both students at once, and both of you will get the same score and the same feedback. If there were multiple students working on this with you, then you can add multiple group members. In some courses, you may also be asked to submit a programming assignment or some code to Gradescope. For programming assignments, you'll select the name of the assignment on your Gradescope account, and you'll be asked to drag and drop some files containing your code and any other required files that your instructor has indicated into Gradescope. If it's relevant, you'll also have an option to upload via GitHub, in which case you could connect your GitHub account and upload the relevant repository and branch to Gradescope. With the standard upload option from your computer, you'll be able to upload any number of files, including files of different types and including zip files. In this example assignment, students were asked to submit some Python code that works like a calculator. So I have all of the relevant files for this assignment saved and zipped up on my computer, and I can just drag and drop the zip file into Gradescope. I'll see all of the files inside the zip folder, and I can click Upload to upload them to Gradescope. And in most cases, you'll see this message that says the autograder hasn't finished running yet. This means that your instructor has defined some tests that are automatically being run on your code, and you'll be able to see feedback on how you did in real time. Usually the autograder just takes up to a minute to run. Okay, so the autograder has finished running, and I can see here all of the unit tests that the instructor has defined for this assignment. I can see the test that my code passed in blue, and the test that I failed in red. I can also see my score and any custom feedback that the instructor has provided for the failed tests. If I want to refer back to the code files that I uploaded, I can see those in the code tab up here. So these are all the files that I uploaded. And once you view your autograder results, you will be able to resubmit as many times as you'd like before the deadline to try to increase your score. Note that in some cases, there will also be additional questions that the instructor has indicated for manual grading, such as the style question here. If you see questions for manual grading, that usually means that your autograder score is not your final score for the assignment, and there will be another component that your instructor or your TAs grade after the due date. In some cases, you may also not see any autograder results, and your instructor may opt to not upload an autograder and just grade all of your code manually with a rubric. In that case, you will also see all of your feedback and your score at a later point after the due date has passed. Now let's take a look at how to view your scores, grades, and feedback after your assignment has been fully graded and published back to you by the instructor. From my Gradescope homepage, I can click on any assignments that have been graded, such as this midterm here. 
On the left, I will see my original submission for this assignment, whether that's an exam that the instructor scanned in or a homework that I uploaded myself. I can flip through the pages of the submission by clicking on these arrow keys here. I can rotate it. I can zoom in on it or out on it. And I can view all of the pages of my submitted file here. On the right is where I'll see my score. So I see my total assignment score up here. And, and then I see a breakdown of all of my scores per question. If I click on a question, I'm going to see the rubric that the instructor used to grade this question. And any items that were applied to me will be highlighted. So in this case, let's zoom in to get a better idea of why I got a two out of three on question 1.1. It looks like I missed the constant, and so I lost the one point. Sometimes the instructor will also write a personalized note to you, and if they do that, you can see that below the rubric. Sometimes you will also see some annotations that the instructor has drawn or typed directly on your submission, and you'll be able to see those directly in line. So in this case, the instructor has actually typed a note that I need a plus C over here. I can now go through all of my feedback and all of my scores and see any comments and rubric items that were applied for each question. For some assignments, you will also have an option to request a regrade. You will need to request the regrade at the question level. If I select a question, this request regrade button will become enabled, and I'll be able to send a note back to my instructor or the person who graded the submission, asking for more points, asking for clarification, asking any sort of questions about the grading for this question. So let's say that I actually think I got this correct and I deserve a one out of one instead of a 0 0.5 out of one here. I can click Request Regrade, and I can type a note to the person who graded the submission, asking them to review the grading. I can click Request to Regrade, and now your message has been sent back to the person who graded that answer. You will see now that this question is in review. You'll see when you requested the regrade, and if you want to edit, the request or add more details, you can do that here. You can also monitor all of your pending and completed regrade requests from your regrade request page, which you can see up here. So you can see that I've submitted a request for question 3.2. I can see when I did that, and I can see it's currently in a review. When your instructor or TA reviews the regrade request, you will get an email with their response, and the status will also change here to completed instead of in review. Note that you can submit separate regrade requests for multiple questions on the assignment, and you can also submit a new regrade request for a closed question. Also note that the option to submit a regrade request may not be available for all assignments. That's determined by the instructor. And for some assignments, the instructor may also set a time window in between which students can submit regrade requests.